All righty. Good day to all you glorious Rascalian Resonators, you absolute legends. The name is Fox Soul. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Weather and Waves. And hopefully, wherever you're at, you're having a tremendously fantastic and glorious day. In today's video, we're going to take the time to discuss a topic that typically comes out on the stream every now and then. And I've been saying that I will, I'm going to be talking about this, but I've not made the video because I'll put it this way. A lot of people are going to consider what I'm about to say a drama farming when it's really not. It's just my opinion about different content. The problem I see is that when it comes to weather and waves, there is a lot of content creators and as well as players that likes to over exaggerate some information and not look at it objectively. So I want to talk about a few key different points on that. And yeah. Really, that's about it. So if you're interested, take a seat, grab a cold one, relax, and let's dive into the conversation together. So, like I stated, there is from players, from content creators that like to go ahead and Talk about weathering waves and the issue that I see with most of this content is the content that they're talking about is not exactly wrong. It's more or less that the content that they're discussing is being over exaggerated, which can lead to some people feeling, you know, misinformed, if you would. Not everybody's going to feel this way, and that's great. Because I think some of these content creators, there are good content creators. I think some of these people who do, does bring this information, they are good people. It's just that in general, they're really trying to push an idea. So, for example, um, the co-op event. The co-op event has been regarded to a lot of different people, which makes me wonder if they've played other games in the past or something sometimes that it is one of the best things that's ever hit you know kuro games was cooking with this mode they did a really great job it's absolutely perfect yada yada a lot of bing bang blah 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 and the thing about it is is that i will say it like this you know it is a very good first step for kuro games it actually gives me hope for the future you know in general it gives me the f hope in the future that, you know, Weather and Waves Endgame is going to have a solid co-op, you know, game mode that will, you know, entice low-level players and high-level players, whales, free-to-play players, to basically work together and accomplish a common goal and have true incentives behind it that will make people want to continue playing it every other week or every other day, you know, in general. Now, fellow content creators and fellow people who say that I probably will take an L on this is that, you know, apparently I don't realize how great the co-op mode is and that I'm missing some information, but I'll say it like this. I've played other gotcha games in my time. I've played other games in my times that were not gotcha that has a better co-op mode than reusing same assets and just you know giving it a slightly different spin and that's basically what the co-op event is like the co-op event is the same assets that we have which is the tactical hologram bosses allows you to fight it in a co-op arena basically that is time locked and you know you use ecloids to give your characters a better edge or a better buff when fighting these together and in general it's just basically taking what happened a little bit with tower defense event that happened in 1.2 putting it with tactical hologram bosses and throwing the co-op in there and saying this is an event and it's just basically mashing a lot of already used assets into one and it's not bad it's not horrible like I don't take like what I'm saying like this is the worst thing. No, this is very, very decent for what Kuro Games did. It's just that there has been better 
systems that's been already in place well before this that I think Kuro Games could take a look at and incorporate those ideas into this system. That this right here is just something that it's fun, but its presentation wasn't actually good in my personal opinion. The way it works is not good in my personal opinion. And that a better mode idea would have been, you know, taking elusive death realms, shorten it down and throw tactical hologram bosses and make it to where it's like a boss raid to where we got to run through this and fight bosses. And even then, I wouldn't have used the same bosses that we already have in the world. I would have done something completely brand new that, hey, this is just, you know, straight up the only this is co-op bosses that's only for co-op mode you're not going to face them in the real world in the rest of the game world this is just for the event and that's it and make the event permanent but i digress i've already made a video about this and i might may make another one later on depending on what happens but yeah like that is like one scenario a lot of people will regard to the co-op mode as being perfect and it's really not now when you get into other types of conversations that you know, has been shown, put into my face. You'll have people that's going to overhype, you know, investments of characters. So, for example, a video that's been put on front of me, you know, I'll use it as the prime example, is stating that, you know, Shorekeeper itself, which I'll showcase, that Shorekeeper's, you know, summon zero is absolutely almost godlike in its own regards that it's not just a quality of life update that it has a heavy impact on sub dps's and so forth on that well i'll say it like this i agree with certain things you know like characters like yeah a dps would have a ma a massive benefit from this because of the duration being extended by 10 seconds allows pretty much his full alt and resonance skill to pop but for the rest of this as you know the idea of the effective range of healing buffs by 150 or the casting intro discernment is no longer in the stella realm is not really something that is going to drastically impact the gameplay. I hate to say that to that, but that's the truth. Like, in all honesty, the way they're trying to point it out is that it's going to have a major, major impact on the sub DPSs to where the sub DPS is going to get the full benefit of crit rate and crit damage and the idea behind it i'm going to say like this is that i understand where they're trying to come from but the logic behind it kind of is poopy not gonna lie it's kind of poopy on the way you're trying to explain it it's very confusing at first but from what i've seen of it it was very confusing but when i finally discussed this with several people who explained it to me in english i'll say it like this and explained to me the premise it's like why would you want to do that like the idea behind what was suggested and what was being over basically over exaggerated on is that this will allow you to go from basically let's just go ahead and make the team real quick let's just make a team with shorekeeper i think i already got one this is perfect this will allow you to basically go from shorekeeper to sub dps back to dps back to the uh, sub dps and get the full benefits because you have an 10, extra 10 seconds delay <clears throat> whereas you really in my personal opinion wouldn't want to really do that in a rotation not unless yeah like it did state later in the video where if you're going to do like a hybrid build like two dps's and a you know support which would be short keep i could see the benefit of how that would work you know in all earnesty for a team like that but the sub dps job a true sub dps job is to buff and benefit the dps so going ahead and making a claim that this is going to impact dps's is an exaggeration because the rotation that you're going to want to do with shorekeeper is you're going to want to go from shorekeeper you're going to want to pop your alt for example you're going to want to go to your sub dps whichever you decide who is your sub dps this one right here actually would be the main 
after you're able to build up her you know outro skill and get her going you would pop into your main dps and then back to shorekeeper to pop her buff to pop her intro discernment and then restart the entire domain again because then you get an additional 40 seconds and you just repeat the loop and it's more beneficial to do that in terms of you know consistently having a healing domain around you consistently having nothing but crit rate and crit damage around you so i mean it's a better option in that regards you also have people who's over exaggerating the fact of how you know good 1.3 story is in another case scenario in that case scenario 1.3 i'm not going to say that 1.3 story was bad but i'm not going to tell you that 1.3 story with the shorekeeper is a 10 out of 10 must watch i honestly do believe and i think a lot of people i've discussed this with believe it the same way is that shorekeeper is a prominent character that showed itself in 1.3 and if you want and basically 1.3 story is more or less around three to four hours give or take to complete it depending on how much time you have and in the story compared to what it was before there was before in the story a lot of things that really wasn't necessarily needed to be drawn out that was drawn out in 1.3 this is where I wish it was been drawn out a little bit more because honestly, the 1.3 story feels completely rushed in my personal opinion. And a couple other people I've talked to, this is a prominent character that I feel like true character building for shortkeeper wasn't put into consideration. It's like Kuro said, Hey, look, this is a beautiful character. His name's Shorekeeper. She's going to be the greatest support. You're going to love her. Here's a quick story. A lot of bing, a lot of boom. Done, done, done. Thank you, bam. Bye bye. There's still more, I know, with 1.4 coming, you know, story wise, that they'll probably push in with Shorekeeper. But I really feel like the story of Shorekeeper wasn't a natural balance like what was happening with 1.0 all the way to 1.2 is that you had characters like gn you had characters like jinshi chang li you know that pretty much we built a relationship we built our likes and our dislikes around these certain characters because of natural development and when it, even with Zeshe and with Yao, it's the same way. Their stories were, you know, built. The character story, it felt organic built. I didn't like Zeshe because organically, the way she feels, she is not a character that, quote unquote, resonates with me because her personality is a doorknob. Now, grant you, I will pull Zeshe and I will pull Yao out because they're not really anything that's part of the main story. But Chang Li, Jin Shi, Jian, these are three characters that are part of the main story in a sense. And their character development was done really well. Jian with the story with Jin Shu Lin and everything else, you know, how it came through. It's all the way down to his companion story. Jinshi from the beginning of 1.0 all the way until 1.1 when you fight the you know the divinity you fight Ju. all of this made great exception it was a lot of character building that was built up that showcased even Chang Li was built up all the way into her own companion story and it was really good stories that got me interested in the characters doorkeeper it's like we have a build up we're coming to the middle and then we're already pushing into the end while we're in the middle of the story there's no real build up it's just like she's there and then boom bang thank you ma'am we're rushing this so that way you all fucking love shortkeeper as fast as fucking possible that's what i felt 
And that's why, like I said, I give the story a 7 out of 10. I think it was good cinematics. I think some of it was really done well. I just feel like a lot of the story was just really, really pushed and rushed than what it should have been. I think that, like, especially even the with to the ending, that it should have been just taking it to a little bit more consideration on the character building of shorekeeper side of things. Really try to build that relationship between both me the main character and her all at once you know in a slow pace this is where like i said this is where the yapping and everything else is supposed to be long and drawn out this is where we have a character that knows about rover's history and i just felt that it was really the best way I could put it is that it was just really overlooked. It was like, it's there, it's explained for like five seconds, and then, oh crap, this is happening. Whereas with other characters, you know, you have Yang Yang and everyone that's fucking talking my fucking ear off. Why isn't this one another situation where I'm getting my ear talked off and have a long drawn out story to the, you know, to the love of shorekeeper so that way it forces me and it makes me want to summon for the character if anything it just made me really not like the shorekeeper as much because i just feel like i'm being pushed to like a character which you know i probably would like anyway if you just have a better developed story but I digress. I mean, Weather and Wave's story has changed in multiple fashions from my understanding. So, I mean, Curl's still trying to get the hang of it. And I know a lot of you are probably going to say, well, it's just a gotcha game. You know, story doesn't matter. And I'm going to say it like this. Story still matters whether it's a gotcha game or whether it's a fucking video game or whether it is. It does not matter. It still matters at the end of the day of good, proper storytelling. I, I still expect, you know, if I'm going to watch a story... That something's going to still keep my interest, not make me go, what the fuck? What, why is this so fast? Like, you had it built up. Like, 1.3 had it really built up, in my personal opinion, to where I was so interested. And then it's just like, all of a sudden, it's over. It's like, really straight to fucking action. And this is, again, another part where I just think it should have been long and drawn out. But these are a couple of different examples of where, like I said, I believe that a lot of people over-exaggerate. I think that some people are over-exaggerating how amazing the story is. I think some people are over-exaggerating just how good, you know, Shorekeeper is at a summon zero. Or whether or not, you know, co-op events are perfectly done. Heck, there is even, I'll even say it like this before in the video. There's people out there who is claiming that the balance in Weather and Waves is absolutely the most perfect balance in this game compared to others. And I disagree. Because I think that's also an over-exaggeration that power creeping and everything else is going to happen in the balance system we're going to see in a short time frame it be busted so i'll leave it with that leave your thought uh, you know what this is what i wanted y'all to do if you don't mind leave your thoughts in the comments below what is something you think is being over exaggerated in weather and waves that if you've played as long as i have or you just start out someone told you something completely amazing about weather and waves Tell me what your thoughts is of something that you think is just, you know, a little overhyped. I like to hear that. And if you like this kind of content, everything else, make sure to give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. We do do daily live streams right now on the channel. Typically after 6 p.m. Central Time Zone or right now currently it's like 9 p.m. Central Time Zone. I've been doing them. But hey, we still try to do them after 6 p.m. Central Time Zone here on the channel. Otherwise than that, guys, you take it easy. You have a good one. And I tell you what, I'll catch you off in the next video. So keep it classic, keep it jazz, and keep it real. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.